Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now going to go through the questions from June 2024, Mechanics M1, International A-Level at Excel. And I'm going to go through these questions one by one, and I'm going to go through them sometimes um, a bit carefully and going through certain points and um, reiterating or focusing on certain issues where I feel some students need help. Um, especially sometimes my questions that I answer are based upon actual questions that students have asked me to elaborate upon. So I'm not going to be doing a walkthrough where I go through the whole paper in one sitting and I answer the questions as quickly as possible or just just basically copy the mark scheme. No, I'm going to try to explain some of the concepts behind the uh, you know topics that I'm going to be going through. So let's start straight away with question number one. You have two particles A and B have masses M and 3M respectively. The particles are connected by a light and extensible string. Initially, A and B are at rest on a smooth horizontal plane with the string slack. Particle A is then projected along the plane away from B with speed U. Given that the common speed of the particles immediately after the string becomes taut is S, find S in terms of U. So initially, you can say before, before the string becomes slack, oh sorry, before the string becomes taut, sorry. Okay, um, basically you have A, and you have particle B on a horizontal plane. Okay, that's A and B on a horizontal plane. And A has a mass of M, and B has a mass of 3M, and they're connected together with a string which is slack. A is projected away from B. So in this case, A is projected with a speed U, this direction. B is at rest. Okay, B is at rest. Okay, so this is, you could say, zero meters per second. And then it says, um, given that the common speed of the particles immediately after the string becomes taut. So when the string becomes taut, you can think of them together as one, like one block moving. When the string becomes taut, this is A and B together. It's A and B moving together. Okay, and their common mass is 4M. And obviously they'll move in that direction. Okay, if once the string becomes taut, and that will be, the speed will be S in this direction. Okay, so we're going to find what S is in terms of U. All right, so now, so this is after... Once A has reached a certain point where the string becomes ta taut, then this is what's going to be the situation after. Because they're joined by light in extensible string, okay, we don't consider the mass of the string. And we know that when the string is taut, that the particles which are connected to it, we are moving with the same velocity, the same acceleration, the same direction if they like this type of connected particle. Okay, so now we can set up now by the conservation of linear momentum, a equation which will help us find what S is in terms of U. Okay, so we've got to decide which direction to take positive. I'm going to take this direction as positive because we normally take Y as positive in these questions anyway. I could have taken any direction as positive. So we can think about the total momentum before the collision. So we've got the total momentum before the string becomes slack. So total momentum in the, in the system before. Well, that's going to be basically just M times U. The M times U and U will be negative. Okay, we're taking that as positive. It's going that way. So M times minus U plus, and you're going to have 3M times 0 is equal to 4M times the speed S. Okay, now... This gives us minus m u equals 4 m s. And this u is, is actually a capital u. So let me just be a bit careful about that. That's a capital u. Make it clear that it's capital over here as well. That's m times capital u. That's minus m be minus u by the way yes minus m times capital u okay so now we can say that the m's cancel so we're left with 
um, u over 4 is equal to minus u over 4 equals to s. So um, s, the speed we can say, is going to be u over 4. Why? Because speed is a magnitude, all right? And we don't put the negative sign. The negative sign just means that they're moving in this direction, the same direction that A was projected in. If the question said find, if they said S was um, a velocity, find the velocity or find the speed and the direction, then we would say U over 4 in the same direction that A was projected. But in this case, they're just saying the speed, so you leave it as this, um, U over 4. So S equals U over 4. We don't write the, uh, the sign. Okay. Now for part B. It says, find in terms of S, M, and U the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A immediately after the stream becomes taut. So A is moving in this direction. Okay, but what happens to A is when the stream becomes taut, its speed is going to be decreased. Its speed now becomes U over 4 in that same direction. Okay, so the impulse acting on A is acting in this direction, right? Because it, it kind of it slows it down. And the impulse acting on B is acting in this direction. Why? Because it, it's, it changes its, its situation, it speeds it up, starts at zero and then it moves. Okay. So we can use um, the fact that impulse is equal to the change of momentum. Okay. Um, the, you know, the change of momentum in order for us to work out this impulse. So we know that the, the impulse is equal to the mass of the object times the, the initial velocity time minus the, sorry, the final velocity minus the initial velocity, the change in momentum. The change in momentum of shape of, of, of an object tells you what impulse caused that moment, that change in momentum. Okay, so now, if we could, we can consider either A or B. It really doesn't matter. Okay, we, we have the same information for both of them. We have the, the information about the speeds before and after for both of them, so it doesn't really matter which one we use. Probably using B will be easier. Okay, if we find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A, that will have the same value, the same magnitude, so the same magnitude as the impulse exerted upon B. Both of them have the same value. So if I find the impulse exerted on B, it will be the same as the impulse exerted on A, but with the opposite sign. That's all. Okay, so I can I can I can choose A or B. Let's choose. Let's consider B. Let's consider B. We have its mass is equal to 3m. We have its initial velocity is equal to zero. We have its final velocity is equal to negative u over four. Okay, so we say the impulse exerted on B is going to be its mass times the change in velocity. So it's going to be minus u over four minus zero. So you end up with three negative 3mu over four. Okay, so therefore the magnitude of the impulse on A is equal to 3mu over 4. Okay, that's the answer to part um, B. Okay, and if you want to check, if you want to make a little check, you can make a check by con considering the impulse exerted on A. So with A you have the mass is m, initial speed was minus u, final speed was minus u over 4. So you're going to have m times the final speed minus u over 4 minus minus u, okay, minus the initial velocity, okay? So that's going to be m times, that's going to be minus u over 4 plus u, which is going to be 3 quarters mu, because that's 1 minus a quarter, it's 3 quarters. So you can see the impulse on A acts in this direction, in, uh, in, the, in this direction, which we call positive. Um, sorry, in this direction, which we call positive, the impulse exerted on B acts in this direction, which we know is negative. Because why? Because B was at rest and it was pushed, pulled along this way. A was going in this direction faster, and then it was slowed down. So the impulse, the slow down acts in that direction, as, as our signs show. We took right as positive, impulse in that direction, and in this case, impulse in that direction. But we don't have to worry about the impulse direction here. We just have to worry about the magnitude. And there is our answer. We just put the value of 
it without the sign. Because the question says, find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on A immediately after the string becomes tall. And here, this is just to check to see that we got the right answer and to make you understand, it doesn't matter whether we consider B or A, okay? We can consider A or B and we get the same answer. Why did I consider B? Because its initial speed was zero. It makes the calculation just a little bit easier, that's all. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so that concludes question number one from the June 2024 mechanics paper, M1 from, from Edexcel, International A-Levels. If you would like to see other questions from this particular paper, click on the link at the top here. If you want to see other questions dealing with momentum and impulse, click on the link over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link here and you can watch the video that will be, um, that will be linked at the top here, which shows you how to use my channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.